came in the mail. As promised, I'm doing kind of a part two review. My Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Sculpt and Set Palette came in the mail. And this one was clearly the popular one because on the Hourglass website, this is sold out. And as far as I can see, uh, nobody else has it in stock. I don't know if it's going to come back into stock or if it's going to be sold anywhere else. But just in case for when that happens, if that happens, I'm going to do a review on it. If you missed it, also in this launch with this new ambient lighting edit palette from Hourglass, we have another one. So they came out with two ambient lighting edits, the Blush and Glow, which has blush and highlight shades, and this Sculpt and Set, which for me was the more valuable purchase because I quickly found all six of the shades in the Blush and Glow, Blush and Glow palette in two palettes. I already had everything. This one has one, two, three shades that I do not currently have in my collection. So I was a little bit more excited about this one. I will link down below the Blush and Glow if you want to check it out. But yeah, here we have it. The Ambient Lighting Edit Sculpt and Set Palette. This baby is a whopping $85. But if you don't know my stance on Hourglass, I truly do believe they have the best quality powders on the market. And they are worth every penny especially these ambient lighting edit palettes which are six pan palettes because they are $85 which is expensive but if you look at the individual price of each of these powders this is the best value that you can get from Hourglass with the best of the best powders on the market in my humble opinion. So the box itself it comes in the normal box with my fingerprints all over it. Uh, 12 month shelf life made in Italy. Comes also in let me clean this off. <laughs> it comes also in the classic hourglass packaging and then it gives you all of the names, what what the product is on the back. Now, this is a different color than the blush and glow, which I really love the blush and glow because it's this light pinky color. This one is like kind of like a champagne colored packaging, but it is the traditional hourglass packaging, which by the way, at the end of this video, Along with this order, which I did purchase myself, I also purchased the new Ambient Lighting Edit Palette in Diffused Rose. So I will have a demo of me using this yesterday because I played with this yesterday, but this is the main focus for today. And this is limited edition as well. So here are the shades in the palette. Dim Light, Diffused Light, Filtered Light, Golden Bronze Light, Celestial Strobe Light, and Transcendent Light. There are four finishing powders, which are the top row and then this one right here. There is one strobe powder and there is one bronzer. Now, if you purchase the blush and glow, this color is also in the blush and glow. I don't like that there's that repetition, but it is what it is. Now, in terms of dupes, if you collect hourglass like me, there's a very high chance you have dim light and diffuse light. Just within my own collection alone, I found these in three different palettes. So these are shades that you can buy. They're in the permanent collection. They put them in a lot of palettes, but I'm okay with that because these are two very useful shades that I will talk about. Filtered Light is one that I had trouble finding. You can't buy this in the permanent line, but it did launch this holiday season in the Tiger palette. I gave the Tiger palette to my mom, so I don't have this shade. Golden Bronze Light is in the Ambient Lighting Edit Trio Volume 2. Transcendent Light right here is in the Ambient Lighting Edit Trio Volume 3. So you can purchase both of these as well. And I believe they can be purchased individually if I'm not mistaken. And like I said, this one was in the Butterfly Palette and it also was in the Blush and Glow. So none of these are new or original to this palette. It's just about the curation of this. And I'll be honest, I'm very excited about this sculpting finishing powder combo right here. I do love their blushes, but I'm I'm excited about this. I really like this. So I'm going to swatch all these. Now the finishing powders are not going to swatch great. I'm going to try and use them on my skin tone because you'll see this transcendent light is not a finishing powder for me, but let me show you how they swatch. But these are all about the action on the face. Like dim light gave you nothing. Diffused light, a little brighter. Filtered light, honestly, gonna see how that bronzes on me. And then this one, I'm also gonna see how it works on me. 
The uses for these colors are very different depending on your skin tone. You can see, you can see they are a very subtly satin finish. These are meant to finish your makeup and be a finishing powder. So I did set my face with a translucent powder and then I go over top to give my skin some bounce and some light and some life when you go out in the sunshine so your face isn't so matte. And then we also have this one which is a bronzer golden bronze light, and then this strobe powder in Celestial Strobe Light. So here's that bronzer. Excited to see how this looks on me. And then the strobe light, which I've used before. So that's what this looks like. Hourglass is not exciting by swatch, especially when there are no blushes and only one highlight. But these shades you can do a lot of different things with. I'm going to keep the lights a little bit more dim than I normally would since hourglass powders are so subtle in what they do on the skin. So the closest color to my skin tone in terms of the finishing powders is dim light right here. This is, I would argue, probably their most popular shade in the range. So like I said, I've already set with powder, but I'm going over with this. Because it leaves, I don't know if you can see, a slight healthy bounce to the skin, which just looks really good in the sunlight. You can set your makeup with this, but I think it looks better to add this after. This shade is also phenomenal on my skin to blend everything on my face. So if I have bronzer, blush, and highlight, and they just aren't looking quite as seamless, I'll go over with a bigger brush and kind of blend over everything, and then it just kind of smooths everything together. So it's hard to see what this does on the skin. Their finishing powders are one of those things where it doesn't show up great on camera, but when you go out in the sunlight just living your life, that's when these do their magic and they truly are magical. There is not a dupe for these on the market if you ask me. Now let's take a look at Diffuse Light, which you can use like I did if you have a fairer complexion than myself, but I'm just gonna put this at the top of my cheekbone. So you can see that that did give me a little bit of light, right? And you can see just the subtlest hint of balance. This is why I have the light so low. So hopefully you can see, but remember, this is about what happens in real life. This is great to blend out a highlight as well. Or if your center of your face is too dark, this will have a little bit more light bounce off of it. The next powder, which is filtered light, do I want to try this as a bronzer? I just want to see. I'm not really sure. I haven't used this since the holidays. But let's see what this looks like. Does it give a subtle bronze to my skin? It does. Now obviously if you have a medium complexion, use this as a finishing powder in the way that I just did. But this would be good to blend out a bronzer for me or even to put on top of a really matte bronzer just to add a little bit more dimension to it. It didn't do too much for me, but these are all for subtle finishes. These are beautiful powders for wedding makeup, especially if you're a wedding makeup artist. These will add that extra finishing touch to the bride. I wish I could explain better <laughs> because it's hard to see on camera, but what that did was super duper subtle, but it really does also subtly blur the skin, if you ask me. So that's how I would use those three shades. Let's actually try the bronzer now, Golden Light Bronze. I just wanna see. Yep, this is a beautiful bronzer for my skin tone. It's not too glowy. This could potentially be a match for your skin tone where you can use this as a finishing powder as well. The finish has a little bit more shine to it than the actual finishing powders, but you can see it's blended in seamless. It does build up in depth if you need it to because it is a luxury finish. It's a beautiful bronzer. It has a little bit of warmth to it, but it definitely is not too warm. Now what I'm nervous about is testing this finishing powder right here. This is in the Ambient Trio Volume 3, which is made for deeper complexions. So if you have a deeper complexion, you can absolutely make this work for you. Huh, how do I wanna go about this? So I'm gonna use this Hourglass brush. And I want to see how this works on one side of my face. 
blends out beautifully even though this brush has a little bit of density. I want to see if this is going to be more of like a bronzy shade on me or more of a contour because it has a little bit more red on my skin tone, right? Which is a different type of bronze for this skin. I tried to use a really light hand and actually that looks really nice as almost like an extra deep bronzer or for when I want more of a chiseled intense look to the face. It's blending beautifully despite it having the amount of pigment that it does. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna use the smaller side of the brush. I'm gonna see if I can contour the cheekbone with this. Yeah, this gives me more of a chiseled look. So these powders, you can pretty much do whatever you want wherever it's going to fit best on the face. So I feel like it's pretty versatile. Even with the different finishes, I think it's important to understand the intended purpose of the finishes and the powders. But you can do whatever you want. I can see why they call it a sculpt and set. Because I feel like this is really making me look sculpted. I'm taking some more of that darkest transcendent light and just keeping it closer to my hairline. Since I have my hair pulled back today and I got a big old forehead. <laughs> Beautiful. So this is just a more subtle way of sculpting the face. I would say typically... When I really want to look snatched, I use powders that have a little bit more pigment, whereas these are more of a translucent vibe, but it's about the finish. The hourglass powders are able to get you that look more natural. So on the days that I want to look really, really sculpted, I probably won't use these powders too much just for photography purposes if I know I'm going to be behind a camera or in front of, you know what I'm saying. But for days that I want to look sculpted but still look very natural, this is stunning. I'm gonna quickly use the highlight, which you would have seen in the last review that I did. But I'm going to take some of this Celestial Strobe Light. This is quite metallic, but it is very, very pretty. Doesn't that look nice? And then I'm going to take a little bit of Golden Bronze Light. Let's kind of sculpt in bronze. The eyes, honestly, I really like this palette. I like that I can grab this palette when I know I want a bronzed look or a glowy setting base. I like that there's so many finishing powders. I think, realistically, I could have gone with one or two less of the finishing powders. Like, I didn't need both of these. I have them so often. They put them in the palettes so often. So I would have wished we had gotten more contoury sculpty types of shades as opposed to so many finishing powders since they do run more sheer. Like I don't know that having all three of these were necessary because when I use this palette I can tell you I'm probably not going to run into all three of these for one use. So it's you know it depends on the look that I'm doing. I would grab one or two of the finishing powders but it's unlikely that I'll probably use all six on the face at once because I just won't need to. And then I'm going to deepen with our transcendent light. Yeah, she does deepen, so you can get a sculpted eye look with this as well. And then to finish off on the eyes, I'm going into the highlight for just a nice glow. So you can use these on the eyes as well, which honestly is very, very pretty. And you saw earlier that I did pick up this Ambient Rose Edit Palette. I'm going to use the blush that's in here. To just add a little bit of color to the cheek and I'm gonna do a demo in just a few minutes here using all three of the colors from this palette because this one is also new oh yeah that brought my face to light and just to show you like these have already blended seamlessly into the skin because they are all hourglass powders but one way that I would use these is take some of dim light and just use this to kind of blend all the colors together to make it more of a fused, seamless look. And then maybe a little bit of diffused light for the highlight. Again, to really blend that into the skin, maybe put it on the high points, the face, the center points for a little extra glare. Oh my gosh, so stunning. So I mean, just taking a step back and looking at my skin, it looks 
flawless right now and that I definitely attribute to these hourglass powders it's a IRL thing you know you gotta see in real life and if you've played with hourglass powders you know what I'm talking about I definitely prefer the sculpting set to the blush and glow because I don't know I I like the kind of sculpting vibe of this better I didn't have all of the shades so it was more worthwhile for me but they both serve different purposes I don't like that the one highlight shade in this is also in the blush and glow but overall like I do feel more positive about this one than I did the blush and glow but as always these are phenomenal quality no matter what it's just is it a variation that you like are these colors and formulas that you think you need I think that this will work actually for a variety of skin tones. I'm curious, I really am not sure how this will work on a deeper complexion. So if you do have a deeper complexion, please let me know if you've tried it or if you just know yourself, how do you think this is gonna work for you? Because one thing about the hourglass powders is I feel like they are very versatile in where and how you can use them on the face, but I'm not sure, I think medium, medium deep complexions this will definitely work and lower but i'm not sure on a deep complexion now i also quickly wanted to talk about the new ambient lighting edit diffuse rose palette that i picked up this is a newer launch from hourglass as well it's quite expensive comparing it to the six panners because this is 69 dollars for three whereas you get 85 for six i think there's a little bit more product in these pans but you have to really like each of the powders in here to justify it so i'm gonna take you over to yesterday when i use this on my face so you can see it's a very very beautiful palette i don't think i needed it i think i just purchased it because i was purchasing one palette already <laughs> um and i wanted to test it but this is a nice little trio it has three different formulas a diffused light which fyi is in this it has rose flush and then it has supernova strobe light which is gorgeous. So it's just a quick little hourglass compilation that you put on your face. So I liked it, but I think it's overpriced. I would much more recommend the blush and glow as opposed to this because the blush and glow is a much better value when you get three blushes and three highlights. Okay, taking you over there now. Jump scare. Okay, I know. <laughs> I'm actually filming my Odin's Eye video right now of their new collection, but with a separate face of makeup, just because there's so many colors between the two hourglass palettes, I wanted to test the ambient lighting palette diffused rose edit that I picked up since I just demoed the main palette for today's video. But let me show you the colors here. So we have diffused light, which I'm gonna show you how I use that after I apply the blush and highlight. So we have rose flush. Oh, this actually had a little bit more pigment than I expected it. Looks really smooth on the cheek, has a very satin, like a very subtle satin finish to it. There's definitely a sheen here. I know it doesn't necessarily go with both of my eyeshadow looks, but I only have one face. I can only do so many looks. How pretty and smooth does that look on the skin? The only powder I have on my face is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. That's pretty. And then I used some of the Catrice Summer Obsession Bronzer from that palette. And then we're going to go into the highlight here, the Supernova Strobe Light. Because you know, Hourglass has a couple highlighters with different intensities. This one is pretty metallic, I would say. Very pretty. I mean, highlighters can only look so different on the skin from one another. But an hourglass highlight really soaks into the skin beautifully. This does have a more metallic finish. And then I want to show you how I use diffuse light, which I have this over and over again. But I like to use it kind of all over the skin to blend the blush, bronzer, and highlight together. If I want a super natural highlighted look, I'll use a dense brush and really pack it on the cheek. I don't think that's really what I want today, but see you can, just kind of showing you on the nose. So where this color becomes visible, it's mostly in real life, right? When the sun hits the face. So I'm just keeping it towards the center of my face to give an all over glow. If you use like a loosely packed brush, a big fluffy one, and you put it all over the skin, it will leave an all over natural glow. 
But that's what this palette looks like. It's just for a really pretty rosy cheek, nice highlight, very easy and quick to grab for. I wish it was a quad and it had a bronzer. I think this one was kind of expensive though. I don't know that this one was necessary. It was like $69, right? I'd honestly rather just get the six panner, even though I said that in the last review, this lighting edit blush and glow might not be one that I recommend for everybody. I think that this is a way better value than this one since this, I mean, I know there's more product, but you get more colors in this one and there's no bronzer or any, oh geez, there's no bronzer or anything in it anyway. So this is still kind of like a blush and glow palette. So with the new palettes that have launched the other two, I would skip this one. I still wanted to have it because I am an hourglass collector and I love reaching for their powders. They just create the best powders. Whatever they come out with, I'm buying it. But taking a step back into the universe, this is probably more expensive than it's worth. But I do like the colors in here. They're pretty. So this is for you to decide, you know? So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Overall, having reviewed both of these palettes, do you think that they are worth it? I think the big thing is these Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palettes will always be worth it. It just depends on what you have and what you don't have. These are a little different because they don't have everything that you need. My favorite ambient lighting palettes are the ones that have the finishing powders, the blushes, the bronzers, the set, uh, what, the highlights, those are the ones that are best for beginners. These I don't think are the best for hourglass beginners unless you buy both, which I don't think a beginner should need to buy both. But I do like that they serve different purposes. It just depends, you know, you're the consumer. I've laid out the facts, you can decide, but Overall, at the end of the day, these contain very high quality powders, so you can just decide what colors you like best. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and found it helpful. I will have the link down below to both of the, well, all three of these palettes and all of the other makeup products I have on my face. And you guys have a good rest of your weekend. Bye guys, have a good one.